Yo, what's good everybody? Welcome to another gifted upload. We're back for NBA basketball. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We have breaking news. Atlanta has made the trade for DeJounte Murray. Now for me, I like this trade. I really, really do. And it's not just from the Hawks perspective, but it's also from the Spurs perspective. This could be one of those bigger trades that we look at um, in the next two to three years and go back saying, wow, what a crazy trade this was for either the Spurs or the Hawks. So Atlanta received DeJounte Murray and they get rid of three first round picks, including a pick swap in 2026. And they're all unprotected first round picks, which is crazy. Um, they also shed salary. They give them Gallinari in return. But outside of that, they don't give up any core pieces and they're able to add to Jante Murray, to DeAndre Hunter, to John Collins, and the rest of the Atlanta squad that we know. I think this is a very big move. And from the Spurs perspective, a lot of people are killing them. I can understand why, but I think they're fully committed to just rebuilding. I think that they understand that there, there's a potential ceiling if DeJounte Murray is your best player. I think they're going all in on the draft and getting younger pieces and talent to actually build around more. Um, I do think this is a crazy return though because three unprotected first round picks for, for Atlanta, who still has a chance to not really have such a great record in the East. I think that is a great return for what they could have had. But what people aren't talking about enough of to me is this is a trade that was made because I think the Spurs looked at how many years left on DeJounte Murray's contract and said, we don't want to pay him or we think he's going to walk. And based on that thought process, it makes sense why they chose to move him now compared to later, since they understood that they wouldn't be a competitive team in the West as far as actual contention for a couple of years. And if he leaves and you get nothing back for him, we're then criticizing the Spurs for not getting a good return back. I think the first round picks are crazy. I think that could be really good for the Spurs moving forward, especially with the talent that we know is coming. Scoot Henderson, like all these strong talents, Victor Wembiana coming up in these next couple drafts. So the fact that they got that on top of a pick swap is pretty outstanding for the Spurs. Obviously, they take on... Kalinari's contract but that's not going to hurt them long term he's going to be gone within the next couple of years off of the Spurs anyway so that's a huge win but also from the Atlanta perspective that is also a pretty good win you're able to keep your assets as they stand now you add a all-star caliber guard who can play phenomenal point of attack defense and now that he has a reduced offensive load i think you're really going to show him shine on defense because of his offensive load he wasn't as elite as he was before so i think that now in this new situation where he's asked to do less on ball creation he can really tap in on his natural talent as a defender at the point of attack which i think is sensational for them however this takes us to our next part of the video this trade shows me that atlanta is putting all the chips to the table on the idea of trey young's portability when i say portability i'm speaking to how a player is able to fit with other players and can play on and off the ball to complement whatever the other players weaknesses or strengths are when you look at trey young and you look at dejounte murray these are two players that shine when the ball is in their hands and they're making decisions. When the ball is not in their hands, they're less impactful compared to what they are on the ball. Trey Young is too talented, too good of a shooter to not have a strong off ball game. I think having DeJounte Murray come in as a playmaking guard who can also make great passes and great reads, there's no excuse why Trey Young cannot play off of the ball more and be even more impactful. I think the off ball stuff could open up a strong portion of Trey's game to where he can just get easier looks and he doesn't have to create everything naturally on the ball. Cause when that's not going, Trey Young won't be as impactful. Trey Young can run off of screens more and specifically having DeJounte Murray on the court, even though he's not the greatest shooter, 
he has the natural ability to catch the ball explode to the basket and create another secondary look as a playmaker so having him have the innate ability to attack closeouts i think is really strong for atlanta to have and again keep in mind they didn't give up any of their strong wing defenders so i really do like this move from atlanta however this is them like hedging their bets uh putting faith in trey young and now to me there's no like real excuse for him to not be able to be good off ball we all know how talented trey young is the next evolution of his game is his off ball portability and i really think that if he does that and he buys in on that him being surrounded by multiple defenders multiple lob threats and guys who can knock down shots atlanta's offense could be really 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 good on top of the fact that in the coming years they can still continue to develop their players or even maybe flip john Collins for something better next offseason so i actually like this move for atlanta obviously we still have to see how this plays out but overall strong moving again free agency is just starting so i'm very excited to see what these teams do i think for the spurs this is a clear rebuilding method that they are, are going for we obviously have to see how that pays off but what a return that they got for Tejante murray i know people want to see players but the spurs are not valuing players if if you're trading Tejante murray whatever you get back player wise in a trade for Dejounte murray you're going to lose that on top of the fact that this is a team that is not going to be in contention so you really should value higher picks higher draft capital moving forward because that really sets up your future without Dejounte murray and if you want to make the argument that you would rather just have Dejounte murray instead of going through all that then i can respect that argument i really really can't but I think for the Spurs, they're acknowledging the time now. They're trading him while his value is the highest compared to waiting another year where he's completely disgruntled, has one more year on his contract, then it's super hard to move. They made the right decision. And I think for the Hawks, they're taking it. They're not wasting time. They're not trying to like wait to see things happen. They saw a, a, a chance and an opportunity to, to go get an all-star who has great talent, who can grow with Trey Young and they did that we now just have to see how they fit the rest of the roster in these coming years and specifically how Dejounte and trey can play together another part of this trade though that i do like is the staggering between trey young and Dejounte murray i love that because atlanta can sometimes be a, a clear negative when trey is not on the court so now having trey young and Dejounte have the ability to stagger on top of the fact that there's enough spacing to complement both of them when they come in and out of the game i like that and i do think that that could really sustain their offensive attack moving forward again we just have to see exactly how things play out i also love it just because imagine a lineup defensively where you have um onyeka okongu with Tejante murray and deandre hunter like they have some super strong defenders and if they all put it together it could be very very scary and then having trey young as a natural playmaker with guys who can get to the basket uh catch oops and are explosive that's just a great fit so i do like that um again though in the east i'm not quite sure what this does for atlanta as far as putting them in cont contender position I think it's too early to say that now but i do think that this team is positioning themselves to be that within a year or two i really really do but there's a chance that just having tajante murray overall as a stagger partner and a secondary playmaker could just make their team so much better that they are in that position obviously we've seen the hawks um accomplish more than people think that they can so i'm not going to completely rule it out but I do like the idea or the vision that Atlanta has with this trade. So we have to see how things play out. I've said it like four times now, but we really do because the East is still going to be competitive. We talk about the West, but the East is going to be tough. The Celtics are coming back. They're going to be stronger. The Bucks are going to have a healthy Chris Middleton to start the season. Also with some added time off, I do think he could be even more impactful. 
you still have the Raptors who are slowly but surely developing. Like, there's still some teams that are going to come up there and be great. Philadelphia with James Harden, which that will be its own video pretty soon. But I really believe James Harden will be an all-NBA player next season. Obviously, Joel Embiid was an MVP candidate. So the East itself is still going to be tough. I can't pencil in the Hawks to be at the top of that pecking order. But the future that they're establishing themselves for within the next two or three years, if you're Trey Young, you got to appreciate them getting you another guy who can create. Having creators on the squad is tremendous for Trey Young. And this gives him the opportunity to maybe dispel the narrative that he cannot play off ball at all. Because now you have another guy coming in who can help impact winning with you. So overall, solid trade. Um, but... I'm going to end this video here. We got some more off-season videos coming out. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate the support. We're going to keep on going. But peace out, Gifted Gang. Peace.